So then the scripture says that Job was blameless. He was a man of integrity. And it said that Job did not sin. So then if that is in the Old Testament and Job did not possess the Holy Spirit inside of him, then how is it today when Jesus left, he left us the Holy Spirit. Oh my God. And the scripture says, walk in the spirit that you do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So then that tells me, A, that it is possible to live a blameless life of no sin. Oh, that sounds like to somebody too much responsibility because what that takes away, that takes away your excuse not to be great. That takes away your excuse not to be holy. That takes away your excuse to be faithful to your wife. That takes away your excuse. Oh, I can't get no help up in here. Oh, it takes away your excuse of fornication. It takes away your excuse of pride. It takes away your excuse of adultery. Look at your neighbor and say, it is possible to live right in a wrong world. Tell them again, say, it is possible to live right in a wrong world. But what happens is when you lack what is called commitment and dedication, then what happens is you don't get the same result as someone else that is committed. The scripture says, whatever you commit unto God, he is faithful to keep it. So then if you feel like you might lose your mind, if you would commit your mind to God, he will help you. Look at your neighbor and say, you just got help in five minutes and you didn't even know it. If you would have received the word with joy, oh, God would have delivered you right there. If you would have been real with God and say, God, I need help. Somebody ought to just talk to God. You ought to forget about your neighbor. Oh, my God. You ought to forget about what you look like. And you might as well take off the mascara, throw your shoes off, and say, I need help. I need help. I can't get a breakthrough. I'm going through in my marriage. My children going through hell. My kids got attitudes. I ain't got no job. I ain't got no money. Oh, everything on my mind is everything besides God. You need to say, God, I need help. So then, listen, somebody's in there saying, oh, my God, I didn't come for this type of message. You know why? Because what happens in today's modern church is the church wants to be motivated. Oh, my God. The church wants to be encouraged. The church no longer wants to hear the message of holiness without no man shall see God. For isn't that what the scripture says? Everybody wants to come and be blessed. Everybody wants to come and have money. The scripture says it is better to enter into heaven with one hand and one foot if both of them is causing you to sin. Get rid of the sin out of your life. Oh, you ought to shout hallelujah. You ought to give God a praise that he loved you that much. That he said, listen, there is something that you possess that's not only offending you, but it is offending God. So then when we go over to the book of Matthew, it says that you cannot put new wine into old wine skin. So then do you know what the trouble in the church is? Everybody want a new blessing, but don't nobody want a new attitude. Everybody want a new car, but don't nobody want a new tongue. Everybody want a new house, but don't nobody want no new prayer. Everybody want a new husband. Oh, I can't get no help up in here. But don't nobody want a new worship. Somebody ought to say, God, make me new, make me new, make me new make me new and so then the scripture says for if it is possible 
impossible for me to put new wine into your old wine skin. You won't be able to take it. Can I tell you the reason why some of you ain't been promoted? Because you still got the old attitude. You still got the old mindset. Your mind cannot even conceive or hold the new thing that God is doing because you're still in the old. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, 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 neighbor. You better get hold of what God can ready to do in me because I got a new mind. I got a new mindset. I got a new worship. I got a new heart. And if you don't catch up, you going to be behind. You ain't going to recognize me. We won't be able to get along because you still in the old and God is taking me to the new. Do I have anybody in here that have made up in their mind and I won't apologize? I will not apologize. I will not apologize because I cut my hand off, but you still want both of yours. I cut my foot off, but you still want both of yours. I gouged my eye out because I knew it wasn't good for me. So then when God looks upon me and he sees that I'm willing to get rid of anything that would offend him, that will cause me to be an enemy, don't get mad when he starts pouring the new wine out in me. Get your neighbor and say, I, I want to apologize. I want to apologize. I want to apologize for living holy. I want to apologize for consecrating myself. I understand you want to go to the club, but I ain't apologizing for not showing up. Oh, I understand you want to take me on a date, but I ain't apologizing for saying no. Oh, I thank you for the pampers. Oh, but baby daddy, you can't come in no more. Oh, somebody say, I want to apologize. I want to apologize for living right. I want to apologize for being committed to the God I serve. I want to apologize for lifting up a standard. And the issue is the reason why you can't take me because you're still in the old. Can I tell you something? When you begin to be the vessel that God has called you to be, everybody won't be able to take you. So then that's why the scripture says, old things have passed away. For behold, he has made all. Somebody say he made all things new. I got me some new friends. I got me some new intercessors. Oh my God. Oh, y'all think I'm talking about people outside the church? I'm talking about the folks in the church. Because some folk want to stay religious. And all 